Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. Super excited to tell you a little bit more about Echo 3D and talk about how you can build 3D AR in various applications right now. Thank you so much for the event organizers for inviting me to speak. Really excited to speak with you all. I'm Alon, I'm the founder of Echo. It's a cloud platform for 3D applications where we provide tools and our infrastructure for developers and creators like yourself to build AR, VR, and 3D applications at scale. I'm going to start by saying hello. Um, I'm Alon. I did my master's in computer science at Columbia University here in New York. I did my undergrad in computer science and electrical engineering. Um, so I'm a certified nerd and a big believer in the intersection between 3D and cloud technology. And today we're going to talk a lot about that. But before we start, I want to level set here a little bit. I'm going to use these terms a lot, virtual reality, augmented reality. So I just want to kind of define them together and make sure that we're on the same page. So virtual reality or VR is when everything around you is digital. You're fully immersed in a 3D environment, and everything around you is a the 3D generated um, kind of CGI construct. You're looking at the world through some a headset that occludes everything you're seeing, and you're controlling the world with your hands or a set of controllers. As opposed to augmented reality or AR, in which we still see the real world, but that world is being overlaid with digital content. Uh, we're looking at the world through some optical see-through, um, like the, you know, glasses or some headset, um, or through a camera see-through, like a phone or a tablet. And a really cool way to understand this is the amazing movie Space Jam, in which we have Michael Jordan being teleported into Looney Town. Everything around him is a cartoon. He's kind of fully immersed in this digital environment. That's a really good example of virtual reality of VR as opposed to what we have later in the movie in which we have the Looney Tunes coming to our world, playing around with like Jordan and Bill Murray and interacting in the kind of real life court. And that's basically the differentiation. Either we are going to Looney Town or Looney Town is coming to us, VR versus AR. Now, this is obviously a comical example, but a real world example of that is something that you all probably uh, know, something like Pokemon Go is a good example for augmented reality in which you have people running around, interacting with digital monsters that are not really there. Um, or virtual reality when we have something like Beat Saber that people slash cubes based on the rhythm of the music in a fully kind of 3D generated environment and everything around you is kind of a fully digital construct. Now, another example of this technology that's really close to my heart is um, my thesis project at Columbia University. Uh, the pun here is definitely intended. Uh, we took CT and MRI scans, converted them into 3D, and then placed them on these smart glasses for a physician to basically see the patient's heart floating above them during surgery. It was an amazing, amazing use case of augmented reality. The hashtag was AR in the OR. Uh, and it basically allowed the physician to get a 3D reference map of the patient's anatomy in real time. It was an amazing, amazing use case, a uh, really cool way to kind of integrate new technologies and see the OR. But the problem was that in order to do this thing, I had to do something that I really, really hate. And that's waking up super early in the morning I had to be at the hospital at like 6 a.m., take those 2D scans, convert them to 3D models, put them on the application, redeploy it with the glasses. And that took so much time and so much effort. And as a developer, I only wanted to do two things. I wanted to manage 3D content, and I wanted to deliver it to an air device. Um, and when talking to other developers who are building applications for other verticals, like uh, gaming and marketing and advertising and training and data visualization, everyone said the same thing. There's no easy way to manage and deliver 3D data. But if you think about it, um, this problem was kind of solved for 2D, right? If you're building a website, you can do something like Heroku as your kind of cloud platform to store um, images and videos. If you're building a mobile app, you can use something like Parse or Firebase as your backend as a service. So we went from web to mobile to now 3D, AR, VR, immersive metaverse. And the question has to be asked, who's going to build the next kind of cloud platform uh, to support this new type of content? And you've guessed it, that's Echo. So we are basically that cloud platform for 3D um, applications, providing tools and other infrastructure for developers and creators to build applications at scale. So today, we're going to see how you can do that yourself, how you can kind of play around with assets, throw them to the cloud, see them on your phone right now live. Uh, so this is going to be really, really interactive. So before we jump into a demo, let's um, set up some more terms. So again, the same way that you don't need to be a web developer to update a blog post, you can just drag and drop an image or a video. It's only that appearance of web and mobile. Or if I'm in New York and you're in California and we're both watching an episode on Netflix, we automatically get the best streaming experience. 
So we translated these concepts into 3D AR VR metaverse, basically allowing you to manage and deliver 3D data and get the best 3D streaming experience. So, and what's interesting here is this kind of bi-directional connection between data and, and location, something that we don't have in 2D, right? You as a user, you can't move an image or a video on the website, but you can definitely move a avatar across the game or a 3D catch across the room, and that needs to be updated on the cloud. So what we've built here is this kind of 3D focused um, content management system in the delivery network is really, again, focused on 3D content and the optimization of 3D content to allow it to be delivered to all these devices anywhere. Um, now I'm gonna jump into a demo, show you how it works. You can do this right now live with me while we're doing this workshop um, or right after you, know, you can basically watch this video, rewatch this video and kind of follow the instructions. And I'm gonna share a few resources that you can kind of use to play around with the system. So let's jump in. Um, you can register for an account for free on our website, which is www.echo3d.co or uh, use the link that we uh, shared with the event organizers. Let's jump in. So after you register, you should receive um, basically access to our console. That's what you're seeing here on the left. And on my right, you're just seeing my phone. When you register, you get an API key. That's your project key. That's basically um, um, your kind of repository of 3D content. And you can have multiple repositories like that. So you can have a lot of collections of 3D assets. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of integrations with different platforms like Android and iOS and Unity, which is a very popular game engine that we'll later dive into, or Java or Swift, or even Niantic released this um, camera SDK for Pokemon Go-like experiences. We already have an integration with that. Um, but let's start with something simple. Let's add some content to the cloud. So I'm gonna click this button right here and I'm gonna add some content. It could be images, it could be videos, it could be 3D models. We also have a collection of over 75,000 free assets for you to use. Um, you can literally just search for free inside the console. So let's start again. Uh, we mentioned New York, so let's start in the Empire Steel building right here. What happens right now is that we take that 3D model, we convert it, we compress it, we put it on the cloud, and then we basically allow it to stream to any location out there. You'll actually be able to stream it to your phones right now with no installation needed. So check this out. So we have the Empire State building right here. Originally, the file format is OBJ, but suddenly you can download it with other formats like GLB, USB-C, whatever. It just means that the, our system made sure that this will work in any device out there. Now let's let's see it in, in, on, on basically on our devices. So I'm going to click this button right here, expose the QR code. If you're watching this live, you can scan this QR code right now. I'm going to do that with my phone. Again, no installation needed. Just put your phone in front of this, um, scan the, the QR code, it will redirect to a website. Again, no installation needed. It will open a web page uh, that will basically allow you to see that 3D model in 3D and in augmented reality. So let's see how that works. So I just scanned it. Here's the Empire Steel building right here. I'm going to click C in AR. The camera will open up. It scans the floor of our office. And there you go. Suddenly the, the Empire Steel building just jumps to my screen. How cool is that? And again, I really encourage you, if you're watching this live, to do the same thing. Scan the QR code. Um, have the Empire Steel building just appear in front of you. If it's too big, just kind of pinch the screen a little bit to, to make it smaller. But how cool is that? I can just like literally invoke the Empire State Building in front of me. I can walk around it, walk inside. Super, super simple. How cool is that? Now, this is an example of uh, surface recognition. The camera recognizes the floor and overlays that with the 3D model. Another technology support is image recognition that allows you to basically have the 3D model overlay a real world anchor, like an image. It could be a magazine. It could be a, um, a, a billboard. It could be a business card. So I'm gonna click this one right here. I'm gonna click see on an image. At this point, um, the image anchor is this kind of QR code that again, if you're watching the slide, you can scan right now. This again, redirects to website, no installation needed. And now instead of having the asset on the floor, it will actually anchor to this image. How cool is that? That first building just jumps out of my screen and allows me to kind of see it in augmented reality through my phone really, really quick. And again, you can do that uh, too if you're watching the slide. Perfect, so we saw um, assets on the floor, we saw um, assets on an image. Um, another cool thing that we really kind of are um, aware of in augmented reality is face tracking, obviously face and stuff like that. So it's something that we support as well. Again, click this button right here and now choose see on the face. Scan this right now. Again, if you're watching the slide, you can do it with me. I'm gonna do it here with my phone. Scanning this QR code, redirecting to a website. It will open up. 
Now the front camera will be enabled, and now the real world anchor, uh, kind of in the real world, will be my face. So kind of the Empire State Building is now a face filter. Um, you can honestly do it with anything. You can do it with makeup, with any other um, kind of face or like glasses, like any other kind of 3D model that it's your face, but basically face tracking will be enabled automatically through the browser. Perfect. So we saw how easy it is to just upload content to Echo and automatically instantiate all these really cool experiences. Let's see other things that you can do um, in real life and then explore the console a bit more and then jump into Unity, which is a game engine that a lot of developers love to use. So other things that you can do is you can add content and you can tag it to a specific location. So for example, I can add this um, kind of uh, fox and I can say, I want it to be specifically um, seen in New York. Um, this is really cool. Again, if you want to build Pokemon Go style experiences that are really tagged with locations. For example, I open the app, I see the Empire State Building in New York, but if I open it in San Francisco, I'm going to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So this is an extra layer of data that we have that you can basically see content um, in specific locations. Another example of content that we support, as we mentioned, is uh, images, videos. So let's upload those as well. So I'm going to just upload um, just a 2D image right here um, that we can kind of um, um, upload. What's cool about Echo is that we, when we upload 2D images, we actually convert them to 3D stickers. And you can take those 3D stickers and basically, again, overlay them in augmented reality or show them on the space around you. We have a bunch of clients who are doing a lot of kind of try before you buy or NFT stuff. And they will upload a 2D um, trading card and then bam, suddenly you have a 3D um, avatar or like a 3D um, trading card that you can kind of show people or put on the wall if an artwork. Um, another thing that we can um, upload is videos. So let's so let's show that and upload a video. And I'm actually going to choose at this point on an image, which basically means that the image marker that we'll have will be a custom image. You're able to basically use any image that you want to be that real world target. So let's see how that works as well. And while it's uploading, let me show you how um, the images uh, kind of are converted to 3D. So I'm just going to allow that. And there you go. We have this kind of a uh, cool image of a maybe NFT lion um, automatically converts like a 3D sticker that you can put on the wall if you scan the, the QR code. So super, super cool. And same here applies for the uh, video. Here we have a video and now it's linked to an image. So when I scan the, the kind of, um, when I scan the QR code, maybe let's do it together, it will actually walk into a specific image as opposed to the QR code. So let's see how that works. I'm going to leave it here again if anyone wants to kind of scan this in real time. So check it out. The camera instantiates. But now um, the camera doesn't recognize the character anymore because it needs the image. So there you go. So we have the image. And bam, the, Empress, the kind of uh, video just appears out of thin air on the image because um, it recognizes the image. And I can kind of play the video um, on top of that. How cool is that? Again, this image could be anything. You can overlay a uh, advertisement on top of the magazine, anything you want. So really, really cool. Thing. Perfect. Um, so we saw how you can upload content. We saw you can see it on the wall. You can see it on the floor. You can see it on the face. You can see it on the image. Really, really, really cool stuff. Um, other things that you can do, uh, maybe I'll clear the dashboard a little bit and um, just to kind of zero it out a little bit. Other things that you can do, as I mentioned again, is like just uh, mobile apps as well. Um, so we have a collection of a sample app that you can use. Um, super, super easy. If I have the Empire State Building here, I can just open this mobile app, the Echo A uh, 3D Go app, plug in the same kind of key, and the same data will just appear out of thin air. So we saw again, we saw mobile, we saw web, and now we're seeing um, just a mobile app. Um, and later we're gonna see how you can do that in a, a fully fledged game engine as well. Let's check it out, super, super simple. The Empire State Building again just appears and I just make it a bit smaller and it's here with me. Now, the cool thing about Echo is you can also do real-time updates. For example, I have this um, 3D model right here, but let's say I want to change it a little bit. So you can click this button right here and it will expose the data panel. Each asset on Echo has this kind of their own database that is associated with it and gives it different properties. For example, if I want this model to rotate or animate or something like that, I can actually add some information here like direction equals right. And bam, start, the cellulite starts rotating in real time in augmented reality. How cool is that? So this is a really simple example, but it's to show the power of the cloud. That you can kind of stream data, almost like a push notification, and tell the asset, I want you to start rotating right now.
So this is again a really powerful tool, and it could be any um, kind of content that you want, any any information. It could be um, levels in a game. It could be um, information about the users. Anything you want, you can kind of store there, um, which is really really cool. Another thing that I want to show you is basically that everything I did so far is also available through an API call, uh, which means that you can also query the data um, as a coder um, and get information about the files right here directly. If you want to share the assets, you can always click this button right here. It will give you a short link to the um, 3D model itself. And this is very, very similar uh, to scanning the QR code. It just gives you like the short link that redirects directly to the model. Um, perfect. So we saw how you can kind of manage content. Let's dive into a little bit more how you can kind of manage um, kind of data. So each model, again, has its kind of database. But we also have a global database that allows you to add data across your entire application and query that as well. Again, this is kind of the power of the cloud, allowing you to connect your app to a database really, really quickly. You can monitor your subscription, basically see how much bandwidth, storage, and API calls you're using. Um, you can monitor the locations of all the assets that you have in the app, where your distribution of content, what servers are supporting applications, and where your users are coming from. You can control the security of your app, basically um, add users, add collaborators to your project. Uh, add sub-projects, uh, enable security features. You can see insights on how your um, kind of content is performing. For example, we use kind of stream that Empire Stable and we see a spike in usage. Um, and we can see how our content is performing across every application, which is really, really cool. And again, monitor users anywhere in the globe. Another cool thing that we offer enterprise uh, customers is basically a way to um, convert and compress assets. For example, I know that I have a lot of users in a location that um, the bandwidth isn't that good or the internet connectivity isn't that stable. I can decide I want this model decimated and poly reduced by, let's say, 35%, basically giving a smaller, compressed version of the file. It still looks pretty good, almost exactly the same, but the file size is a bit smaller and the textures are compressed. Um, you can also decide that you want to compress in different compression algorithms or create a 2D thumbnail. That's everything, again, just with one click or an API call. Another thing that we allow is to basically customize assets. For example, you have this um, 3D model. We see that a lot when people are doing kind of NFTs in 2D, creating different variations. So you can do that in 3D as well. We have this 3D model right here. If we decide that we want to make it red and we want to change the asset, we can do it right here. And then that will reflect automatically in the app because we have these kind of uh, real-time changes. Uh, so this is a really, really a cool and powerful tool to customize and make your app a long-lasting campaign because you can basically change it on the fly. Another cool page that we have is the customized group page. This allows you to customize the web AR experience, so add buttons, add interactions, and stuff like that. Uh, so for example, I can add a button like, let's do uh, buy now, if you are doing something for e-commerce, and a um, link to Google. And then that um, button basically overlay the experience automatically. So we can see that here. If I uh, reopen that web page, refresh it, um, we'll see just a button just was added to the experience. There you go. If I click it, it redirects to the website that I want. Um, and you can add your logo. You can have like a lot of functionality to basically overlay the content. Um, you can also um, add music and, and a background image and really, really, again, customize the experience in order to make it um, yours. Another cool feature that we have is the advanced editor. This basically allows you to kind of um, add assets together, merge them, create this kind of virtual scene. Uh, I already had this kind of whole scene with the fox I added earlier in the building kind of close together. So you kind of basically create your own scene inside Echo. Uh, so you don't have to go back to something like Blender or Maya, wherever you created your 3D model to kind of merge things around. Another powerful page is our tutorial page. This is filled with a lot of examples of um, projects that you can use right now. They're all open source. Um, and then some of them are doing a 3D, AR, VR, um, face tracking, surface tracking, wall tracking, a lot of really cool things like this. Um, really cool makeup tutorial that one of our engineers did in the past. Really, really cool stuff around um, how you can kind of basically use 3D content to your advantage. Um, and my favorite page is actually the inspiration page. This is filled with amazing examples of all these AR VR use cases that people use Echo for. Um, here we have some examples of a menu visualizer or um, the NFT project that I mentioned, or a murder mystery game, or a really cool art installation that people build a kind of underwater aquarium um, that basically allowed kids to see things through virtual headsets. There's really, really cool stuff, or this project that we did with Verizon, really, really, really cool stuff that use, again, 3D 
in cameras and in phones and web browsers. So definitely kind of look at this page, get inspired of what our community of developers have built um, and see again, how you can kind of leverage 3D content to your advantage. So I really recommend that you kind of go through this page a little bit and kind of get inspired with people are building. Um, other stuff that we can do is basically to take um, our application to the next level is to basically take this data and stream it to other platforms. So let's see how that works. So I have Unity right here, which is a game engine a lot of developers love to use. And I'm going to stream the same 3D model I just streamed to my phone or to everyone's phones to um, this um, Unity environment. So if you want to build some VR game, all you have to do is just download our SDK, plug it into this example. And then if I plug in my key right here, press play, data will stream from the cloud to the game engine, very similar to what we saw earlier that basically the 3D model streamed from the cloud to my phone. So let's see how that works. There you go. Model is being instantiated from the cloud into Unity. Think about this, your Unity build is super small. No, the assets don't actually persist in memory. They don't actually exist in the build. They come in from the cloud into your uh, environment, which is a really, really powerful thing. That means your Unity builds, again, are super small. When you publish your app, it's going to be super small. And when you want to publish updates, you can do that from the cloud. Um, so it's really, really a powerful tool for you to basically offload a lot of the um, content kind of management to the cloud. So there you go. You see a model. I textured it earlier. So like you see this kind of uh, cool texture. But if I delete this, everything disappears. Nothing actually persists on memory. Um, let's delete this. And maybe maybe even let's we can create a virtual city. I can add more models right here. Let me do that. Basically just adding more content from from um, kind of from um, my computer to the cloud or again through our collection. Super, super simple stuff. Let's see how that works. There you go. And let me reload my key as well to delete any extra models that I might have. Go. And then press play. Data will stream from the cloud to the game engine again. And you'll be able to see these models just instantiated in real time. So let's see how that works. And then just position them as well. There you go. Suddenly we can have this kind of virtual metaverse city that we just built automatically just by putting in buildings. And if we want to update things in real time, for example, let's say we want to animate something, we can actually do that. So the cool thing about connecting your application to the cloud means that you can actually post um, updates in real time. So I just did direction equals right, bam, it starts to rotate in real time. If I delete something, it will automatically disappear. If I add another model, it will automatically appear. So this is, again, the really kind of powerful thing that you can build when you're building applications is you can control them remotely and you can publish them however you like. And then after they're published, you can also change the content. And that's what content management is all about. So check this out. So we have this kind of rotating building. We have this fox right here that's just instantiated. And if we um, stop the application from playing, everything disappears. If I restart this, everything reinstates in the same, um, in the same place. So this is a really, really powerful tool that, again, um, allows you to um, basically manage your content directly. OK, so we saw web on um, faces, on the floor, on an image. We saw how you can use Unity. Another example that I want to show you is just um, native apps. So if you're building an app um, that's kind of installed on your phone, I'm going to show you right here. And since I already set how the kind of parameters are defined in the cloud, I want to show how cool it is that we can basically just recreate the same scene that we just had on Unity in our mobile device. So if I plug in the API key right here, this is our sample um, mobile app that you can download on the App Store or the Google Play Store. It will basically allow you to recreate the same scene. So check this out. So the camera kind of scans my floor. See, I'm going to tap the screen. And voila, here's the same fox you just saw earlier just appear here. And here's the same building we saw earlier also spinning. So the same state that we left it in Unity also appears here. How cool is that? If I stop. If I say I want this to stop rotating, that date that the kind of update will propagate to the mobile app, and you can see it's just stopped in real time. Really, really cool stuff. And again, a really powerful way to publish content to multiple platforms at the same time and have users basically get different content. Um, other things that you can do here. So we can actually manage data. So as you saw earlier, we can add some metadata to each of the applications, each of the content that we have here. 
Um, we can manage our subscription, basically see how much bandwidth, storage, and API call you use. You can manage location. So what's cool about Echo is you can basically create location-based experiences. So for example, if I upload this building and I decide that I want this building to be in New York, um, and that, that means if I build an application that when I open it, oops, I wrote York, York, let's do New York. Um, if you build an application that you open it in New York, it's going to do one thing. And if you open it in San Francisco, instead of the Empire State Building, it's going to show you the Golden Gate Bridge. So this is basically another metadata that we associate as that's with what is the location. And then you can monitor that location um, in the console. You can see the distribution of servers, distribution of data, and distribution of users. You can secure um, your account. You can add people to your um, project. You can add users. You can add collaborators and work together on the, on the assets. You can see the insights and in how your content is doing. So for example, we streamed the Empire State Building. We already see a spike in usage right here. And this is, again, like a really powerful tool to show you how you can basically um, monitor how people are using your application and using the content and see what's the most popular one. If you're building a really cool application for e-commerce, it might be the case that the green couch will sell better than the red couch, and you'll be able to see that through the data. You can monitor your users again. You can convert and compress assets. So for example, let's say I have an asset, but I know that it's going to be consumed in an area with lower connectivity. So I can say, I want this model poly reduced by 35%. Basically decimate the model a little bit to make it a little bit more um, palatable to um, devices. If you want to rescale the model, you can do that to super, super simple stuff. Another thing that you can do is you can kind of um, retexture assets and kind of change them in real time inside the console. So for example, if Christmas is coming up and you want to change the asset to be red, you can do that in the console and that will propagate into your application. There's something again, a really, really powerful tool that allows you to change your assets even after the app is published. You can also customize experiences. We saw the WebAR experience, so we can add buttons, we can add um, really cool kind of interactivity. Like let's say you want to build an app for selling tickets to movies. So you can have like this kind of avatar right here that is really cool. And then you can add buttons and, and kind of um, prompt and, and your own logo on top of the web AR experience. Really, really cool stuff. You can also edit assets inside. I can kind of merge them together. So if I want to bring in um, this building, for example, and I want to bring it in with another building and kind of merge them together, I can do that inside the web console and then publish that as a new web AR experience. You also have a, like a really, really cool tutorials here on how you can build applications and really open source examples of code that you can use for educational apps and things that use face filters and um, data visualization and training and art and really, really cool stuff. Here's one of our engineers who created the makeup tutorial. So there's really an insane amount of kind of really cool applications right here that you can just um, use and play around with and all use Echo to stream data remotely. Another page is my favorite page is the inspiration page. It is filled with amazing examples of how you can build uh, applications for, again, all these different use cases. Like this one, we use Echo to build a menu visualizer. Or here's an example of an NFT um, kind of gallery or a murder mystery game or a project that we did with Verizon. So there's so many really cool projects here around gaming that use uh, or, or training or data visualization or e-commerce that use game engines like Unity or Unreal or web or mobile. And I really recommend that you just kind of go through these to get inspired of what people are building and how people are using 3D content. Um, you and your industry know best, but you really need to start thinking of how you can inject 3D content and augmented reality and virtual reality and metaverse applications into your industry. And there's so many um, really cool use cases and we're kind of just limited by our imagination. Perfect. So let's recap a little bit. So what did we do so far? So we uploaded some content. We saw it in virtual reality and augmented reality and virtual reality in Unity. We're able to kind of upload stuff, really see it really, really easily, um, scan QR codes. We can also share assets. Um, That's really, really easy to do. Um, we saw how you can upload um, 3D models and tag them at the location. Another thing that I want to show you is how you can upload um, kind of um, images, and those images will basically be converted to 3D stickers. So let's see that. So we're just going to upload a 2D image, just a JPEG. It could be a trading card. It could be an NFT. Or it could be just an image that you want to show. We have a few clients doing e-commerce, and they're basically sharing images on um, basically that you've got to try before you buy and, and post them on, on the wall next to you. So let's do that. Another example of content that you can upload is video. So let's upload a video as well. Perfect. So the content is being uploaded. Again, our system automatically converts, compresses, and kind of 
um, process all this kind of data. So it'll work automatically everywhere. Here we have this kind of 3D model, again, totally shareable and also viewable in augmented reality or through, um, through the web. So let's see how that works for a sec. Like, what does that mean to convert an image to a 3D sticker? There you go. So you have this kind of 3D sticker that you can automatically put on the wall next to you. Uh, anything goes. And same with um, videos right here, just like playing inside the console automatically. Perfect. So we saw how you can upload content. Other resources that I really want to share is our documentation. This is the step-by-step -step guide of everything we did so far. It allows you to basically recreate everything I just did, uploaded content, see it in augmented reality. So definitely, definitely kind of check it out and see how you can build applications with it. Another cool resource is our GitHub page. This is, again, a collection of very cool free example code of how um, you can basically use all these different technologies with Echo 3D to build really cool, compelling applications. Um, let's see, I, I think we have a few here, um, some whack-a-mole game or a Twitter visualizer, like really cool stuff that it's all open source. You can just take it, play around with it, and expand that into like a really cool 2D or 3D game. Um, so really, really cool stuff that you can kind of play around with. Uh, definitely explore our GitHub for that. Here's a really cool example for a WebJL app um, that it builds a 3D aquarium that you can control the fish remotely. Another cool resource is our Slack channel. Um, if you have any questions of how to build applications, you can reach out to our team, or you can tweet us or send us an email, and that's really, really easy in order to kind of engage with our team um, and, and kind of understand how you can leverage the platform better. Perfect. So let's recap a little bit um, now that we've kind of seen the platform. Um, make sure, again, that you register for free at echo3d.co. Let's recap. So what did we see so far? So developers can choose any app, kind of client-side application. It could be Android, iOS, Unreal, Web. We take care of everything. Content creators need no technical skills. We can just drag and drop assets, um, upload them to Echo. Uh, we convert and compress all of them without you doing anything technical. And then we build, store, and deliver those assets to different um, um, devices, like we saw here, like on a mobile app, on a web browser, or on a laptop with Unity installed. Developers obviously save time and money in building your applications. Content creators need no technical skills. Um, and companies can scale their data all over the world really, really easily. We talked about use cases. We saw the inspiration phase. I filled with amazing use cases on um, augmented virtual reality. We talked about metaverse applications for healthcare and tourism and data visualization and games. And it's really, really inspiring to see what you can build um, in your industry with 3D and metaverse. A little bit more about us as a company. Um, we won a bunch of awards. We are backed by some of the most amazing investors in the country, like uh, Qualcomm Ventures and Verizon and Techstars and Conway Ventures and Reimagine Ventures and Space Capital. And we're there for major tech events um, like uh, CES and South by Southwest and AWE. So definitely come and say hello if you see our team there um, and mention that you saw us at the uh, Global XR um, community event. We love to say that we empower developers to build applications at scale on any platform. So it could be, um, and again, mobile, web. So start building. This is definitely the time to build. And I'm super excited to see what you're going to build with Echo 3D now that you know how you can kind of manage and distribute 3D content remotely. Make sure, again, that you register on our website, which is www.echo3d.co. Um, really, really easy. As you saw, we, we were able to deploy content really, really easily just by drag and drop. And it just works automatically. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. Um, if there's any questions, happy to answer them. Uh, if not, that's fine too. Um, but definitely check us out. And uh, my email is um, on the right-hand corner um, if you want to reach out and say hello. Uh, but